Okay, and and who, when you were at the guardian's office, who would be involved in making sure it was being handled correctly? <coughs> now we're talking about the U.S. guardian's office. It would depend upon the area where it's coming in, what is where it's coming in from. But there was generally a person that would be designated that it would go to, and they would they would recommend at that point whether or not it was proper or improper. What do you mean it depends upon the area? Well, for example, if it was a flap, uh, <coughs> a flap involving uh, a major political figure, it would go to the DGPR. If it's a, you know, it depends upon the size of it. You just you can just adjudicate the size of it. And you just learn who to pass it on to. It just becomes like a second nature. It's not a, a rote matter. It's rote in that you report it, but where it lands has to be quickly adjudicated. And those people who adjudicate wrong just simply, you know, don't hold their job very long. Okay, I would object again to move to strike this testimony, this line of testimony. It seems to be in the nature of expert testimony. But I, I, I don't hear an opinion or anything. Well, I don't know you will. <clears throat> Did the uh, Office of Special Affairs uh, assume all of the functions that were handled by the Guardian's Office? Objection, lack of foundation. While, while you were in Scientology when that transition took place? Yes. Objection as to the form. And the Office <coughs> of Special Affairs, uh, would they also handle PR flaps? Objection as to the form. Yes. Okay. And are the members of the Office of Special Affairs, like the members of Guardian's Office, all members of the Sea Org? Well, let me wait. Let me rephrase that. I agree with him. What? What? Uh, who were the members of the Guardian's Office when you were in the Guardian's Office? Excuse me. Names or? No, no, no. Did they belong to any? How was the Guardian's Office staffed? With non Sea Org personnel. Non Sea Org? Yes. Okay. And what about the Office of Special Affairs? Staffed with Sea Org personnel. Was why was there that change? Jackson is the form. That was that was part of the reorganization that was occurring when Mary Sue Hubbard went to jail to bring it under one, one command channel. And that command channel was what? Sea Org Command. Now Based upon your experience in the Guardian's office and your knowledge of the Office of Special Affairs, would Lisa McPherson taking off her clothes in public outside of the property of, of, of any Scientology property in Clearwater, Florida, 95, be a serious or insignificant PR flat? Objection is to the form of the question. Improper credit. It'd be a serious PR flat. Okay, and where would that be reported to? That calls for speculation. That'd be reported to OSA Int in Los Angeles. Mr. Kartazinski testified on page 42 of his October 98 interview with the state attorney's office that he reported what he had told the Clearwater Police about Lisa McPherson to OSA, the Office of Special Affairs. Was he following the command lines of Scientology? That, that would be a prop. That would be a proper um, channel to put such a report on. And when uh, Judy Goldsberry Weber of the MLO office gave a statement to the Pinellas County prosecutors on August 19, <coughs> 1997, that 
personnel from the Office of Special Affairs were in the emergency room when Lisa McPherson was in the emergency room at Morton Plant Hospital on November 18, 1995. Does that indicate to you as a former Scientologist as to the significance of her PR flat? Objection is to the phone. Yes. And what is that? Objection is to the phone. Calls for speculation that OSA had been notified and called in and sent somebody to uh, be there on the ground to handle the situation. <coughs> now, based upon your prior experience in Scientology, would the OSA person in the emergency room be reporting to the local OSA office in Clearwater what was transpiring in reference to Lisa McPherson at that time? Question is to form call for speculation. After the fact, and I assume they would be OSA personnel from the organization, so they would naturally go back and report yes. Move to strike is speculation. Based on the answer. Based upon the documents that you previously identified that we've marked, and let's, um, let's strike that question. I forgot there's one document here. Let me show you exhibit number seven. This is the one we don't have a copy of. Right. Uh, entitled The Command Charts of Scientology. Can you identify that? Yes. What is that? It's a photocopy of, of a chart that is of this size that was distributed to all staff. Can you give us a date? It was distributed at the same time as the command channels booklet. So we're talking about the mid '80s. Yes, sir. Well, what did it come out of? It it came with the command channels booklet. So it's in the booklet. There's a fold up. So it's part of the. Well, you just had exhibit number uh, six was just part of what you say is the command channels booklet. Is that right? Yes. And this number nine. Well, what is it? Number what? Seven. Number seven. Uh, number seven is is also part of this book. Whether those are saying yes. Oh, no, this is six. Actually. So so seven. The chart is part of six, which is just an excerpt from the command channels of Scientology book. Is that right? Yes. The best way to describe this is as a, as a graphical, two-dimensional graphical representation of what's described in the booklet. And what is the significance of exhibit number seven? Objection as to the form. First of all, uh, which is usually mi missed by most people, it's the command chart of Scientology, not the Church of Scientology. And why is, the, if you know, the word church not included in this command chart? Objection. Lack of foundation. Because inside of it are some of the secular activities such as the World Institute of Scientology Enterprises, social reform activities down at the bottom, areas that are not part of the Church of Scientology. 